Mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. Y'all, welcome to this episode of Off The Grid. I'm your host, Mitchell Knapper. This is a podcast where I said what I said and I meant it. We caught that on all three cameras, right? I said what I said and I meant it. That's the only rule on this podcast. If you're gonna say it, say it with your chest. I am very, very, very excited to be here today. Now, usually I'm excited for every episode, but I think I'm a little more excited for this one than the last ones that I've done. Because, first of all, I have somebody with me that I absolutely appreciate. And then, like, he's bigger than I thought. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna hold you. I'm not gonna hold you. He's bigger than I thought. He just is. We, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this. Let's do guest introduction. We have Braden Hamilton. Hi, um, I'm Braden. Uh, I go to the Baltimore School for the Arts. I'm a clarinetist. I'm a senior. Um, I am also the student government vice president. Yeah, um, the student liaison for the Black Student Union. I'm a community activist, mental health activist, and an arts activist. Oh, and I also have a podcast called Soulfully Enlightened. Um, so yeah, check that out on Instagram. <laughs> Brayden and I have been friends since the seventh grade. Do we have that? Do we? Do we remember that story? Yes. We, we, we also that? were on the stage both as representatives for the class during our graduation oh, speaking, yeah. we'll have speeches. Oh yeah. Valedictorian. Oh <laughs> yeah. Thank you for joining me. This is fun. I got somebody I know next to me, right? Like I got, this is my dog. This man. <laughs> <laughs> this man. <laughs> we have the infamous, the incomparable, Big Fred. Wow. Can we take our phones off? Cause I want to know what infamous really means. Like I heard people say it before. You know what? Cause I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. I still want to know. It's okay. I still want to know. I feel like infamous is probably one of those things where it's like, okay, you're like you're known, but you got that kind of contra. No, I wouldn't say controversial. Mm. I wouldn't say controversial. Just something, it's like something, something intriguing, you know, right? It's, it's got something intriguing. It's something interesting. Okay. Infamous. See, this is. I produce it. Mm -hmm. I'm blind. Y'all something you know for well known and something you're known for that is unique to you. Oh, mm -hmm. well, thank you. Infamous. Thank you. Infamous. I appreciate that, man. So I did use that word in right context. Very much. I did use that word in right context. <laughs> but you know how like you say something and like it'd be like completely out of context and then you thought you did good about yourself? You did great. I did that. <laughs> See, <laughs> I feel good about myself now. Come on, man. Let's get right into this. I am very excited. This episode, mental health, we're gonna do it. Well, we're gonna do it in a different style. We're gonna talk about mental health and Bullying. So I'm gonna talk to you first. You have a podcast, mm -hmm. um, Soulfully Enlightened. Shameless plug. Soulfully Enlightened. <laughs> so my podcast, we talk about um, how the arts and mental health connect. I think a lot of people uh, realize or don't realize that the arts is a uh, self-expression, no matter if it's classically done, if it's freelanced, if it's gigging, if it's you know doing it in your own home, doing it for fun, doing it for therapy. I think that a lot of people don't realize that it is self-expression. I think sometimes it gets confused with like a, it is a profession, but I think sometimes it gets confused with like standard rules and you have to do it this way. You can't express yourself. It's definitely a form of therapy and it's definitely a public health strategy okay. when it comes to working on the community. And I think a lot of things I've been a part of as I've, you know, growing up in Baltimore City um, have definitely been involved with arts and how to make me a better person and how to train me to do better things um, and using public health strategies and knowledge that could benefit me as a you know young adult. Art is definitely therapy. It's, it's one of those things where it's like you get to express, hey, this is me. However you feel about it, you don't have to look at my art, but this is me and this is my art. Big Fred, as a comedian, I have a question for you. Sure. What was, okay, the, your favorite event, like what was your favorite event to do? What is your favorite event to do? Okay, my favorite event, so um, I, I say this, my first one. First one, I've, I've done a lot of, uh, I've been blessed to do a lot of great events, you know, I've uh, been a part of a lot of great events, but my first event was amazing because I, I broke my neck, that's how I started comedy, I fractured my neck, and I that's was how really, you started. I started comedy, that, that started the story, I broke my neck, man, wow. I was depressed, and start. I was in the crib every day just depressed, and I, um, I remember watching uh, something about, kind of like just how you can kind of think things, you know what I mean, and confidence and belief. And I got kind of inspired, man. And then I watched the roast on Comedy Central, and it was oh, hilarious. Yeah. So I had just been like overwhelmed with like, yo, I could think things into existence. Then I watched a, a, a comedy show, and I was like, yo, when I get my neck brace off, I'm having a neck release party. And it was a comedy show. It was lit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I started, man. So that was my favorite event. Uh, I was at Morgan at the time. A lot of people, you know, especially at that time, 
wasn't going to comedy shows, not just because we all were young adults, but just at that time, it wasn't really people within our demographic that was providing that type of experience, curating those things. So people came, it was everyone's first comedy show. Amazing. Like people calling me two, three days later still, just, yo, I had the best time of my life. Oh my gosh. So it inspired me to get started and do it on a more consistent basis. That's cool. That's cool. And I feel like, so answer me this question about, I guess it's about, I guess this is a kind of a, a thing about comedy. Comedy is such a, a useful tool, even in like bringing issues to light, like even in like bringing like important issues, right? Like heavy issues, stuff of that nature. Um, you have an or you have an organization, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Little Labs. Yeah, that does exactly that. So talk about little, talk about Little Labs. Just ah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. So Little Labs is a anti-bullying and confidence enrichment program for youth, uh, for youth families and educators, to be honest with you. But of course, our focus is the youth. Uh, in schools and communities. So we work with them, it's comedy infused. So we talk about, just like you said, as far as artistic expression as a, a way, not just as therapy, but also as a way of growth and development. Uh, within confidence and social emotional learning, but also within the artistic experience and in turn can help the, the just the school, the live school experience, you know, because it's way, of course academics is the main a vehicle throughout school, of course, but the social emotional learning aspect, the 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 um, how you can interact socially, uh, yeah. your interpersonal beliefs of, of yourself, your confidence levels, all those things are just as important. That's so good. That's so good. So let's. I guess let's get into this conversation. So to the both of you, I guess this is a question for both of you. What is what does bullying look like to you, uh, Big Fred, and to you, Brayden, and how does it impact mental health? I can go first. Yeah. Um, I think bullying is anything that you would not want done to you. Um, and I say that with like, in a general sense, because I mean, like, I think bully can entail a lot of bullying can tell a lot of things. I think there's like, physical bullying, mental bullying, finance, like all bullying is abuse. Like, I, I think, like, I think that like, a lot of people see bullying as like, oh, I'm just teasing you or like, you know, physically harming you. But I feel like, like any kind of comments, passive aggressiveness, like any, all of those things are like bullying and abusive to somebody's mental health, their well-being, and like, cause something that you could say to somebody can impact them forever. And I feel like some people forget that, that you know, whatever matter what you say, it's gonna stick. And even if it's like something just like a little one word, one syllable, like it's still gonna have an impact. So that's kind of how I view bullying. Yeah, bullying is is definitely. Um... Uh, irresponsible use of power, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, especially yeah. young people, don't understand how powerful words are, how powerful emotions and positioning is. So you you will have even students in school that notice that when they say these things to someone, this person becomes even more vulnerable, right? And that's their, one of those, it's a negative experience, but it's an introduction to a feeling that I have power over this person. Mm -hmm. And when you take advantage of that power that you have, you know, potentially over a person, that's 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 bullying one one thousand percent. So whether that's words, whether that's physical, um, and even you know mental abuse in in some way, shape, or form, that's that's all a power. Um, I wouldn't say struggle, but just an abuse of power. You know, in, in in attempting to inflict it on an individual. That's so good because I feel like bullying like it starts with a superiority complex, mm -hmm. right? Like I feel like bullying starts off as one of those things where it's like I feel like I'm better than you. But sometimes I feel like bullying can be an attempt to hide your own it's like security. feelings. Absolutely. I feel like bullying can be that kind of thing. Like I'm gonna make you feel bad about yourself so it distracts me from how I feel about myself every day, consistently. Yeah. So, you know, and I, I've been through one of those experiences where it's like, this was, this was a while ago, but when I was younger, um, I had this one bully that I just couldn't seem to like shake. It was like, I'm, I'm saying like elementary school type thing. And I mean like this thing happened for years, like maybe kinder through like second grade. I had this one bully that I just, I like, I couldn't shake. And so when I left the school, I didn't know how much it affected me until I left the, the, the environment completely. Like I didn't know how much it made me feel. I know how bad it made me feel about myself. I didn't know how even insecure made me feel about myself, right? Like I didn't know how bad it made me feel until I left and then started to all of a sudden think like, well, maybe I am this thing. Maybe I am what they said. Maybe I am, you know, 
maybe I maybe I deserve to be treated that way. Have you ever had an experience? With I think that? yes. Um, I think that I've always been different than my, my peers, um, and not like just like like physically, but like I think like mentally. Um, I've never had like you know I was never the kind of person that was like. I want to, you know, wear pink because all the girls or all the boys in my class wear pink. That was never me. I was like, I like pink because I like, I like pink, you know? So I think that sometimes I will be like the butt of a joke because I was like different than everybody else, which is, you know, everybody's unique in their own way. But mm -hmm. I feel like I, at sometimes I will be like the out, the, no, the outnumbered person. So mm -hmm. I think also when it comes to like bullies, they're so insecure about themselves. They point out everything wrong with you. That nobody will point out what's wrong with them. And I, <laughs> I think that it's it's hard to recognize that in like younger kids because it make you feel bad about yourself really early. And when you like grow up and not feel good about yourself, you will probably feel that way for a really long time because yeah, you're you you're feel, learning you that, feel from that Be hurt, so like behavior is learned. It's mm -hmm. not really something that just like sprung onto somebody. Mm -hmm. And also this is a chain. Like I, somebody who's bullying somebody is maybe also being bullied. Like I think like it's like it's not just something that somebody just enforces. Like it's coming from somewhere. Like it's a source to everything. So I think that and a lot of people don't realize that it's in like I said it's in different forms. So they may be somebody might be hitting on you, but like Another place in, in that person's life, there somebody's like yelling at them and like you know saying words that are that feels like hits to them. You see what I'm saying? So they're inflicting that pain to somebody else, and it's just a train that causes you know damage further down the line. That's so good. I think all of that is is very real because like one thing I realize about like being bullied, you got to heal from that like negative self image. Like I feel like it's one of those things where you really have to go through and weigh the opinions and then you eventually get to one point where you're just like I am who I am mm -hmm. and whatever you think about that I just got there by the way to that point yeah, I feel like a lot of people oh yeah a lot of people oh yeah there. oh yeah because it's, it's like it feels like a breakthrough moment though to get to that point and it feels like a breakthrough moment to get to that point and be like this is me mm -hmm. and if you don't like it you don't like it I I really could care less because mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day I mean you're out here for you so I think it's, I think that's really, really good. So Big Fred, your organization, your organization does things I feel like a little differently. I was able to um, look on your page and the um, organization's page, um, little laughs, right? Mm -hmm. Little laughs, little laughs, shameless plug, laughs. shameless plug, <laughs> shameless plug. Nice. But I feel your, your organization does, does it um, like, like comedic infused, did I say that right? Comedic infused? Yeah, com comic Like it comedy infuses infused, comedy. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I, I go back to what I said earlier, your organization is one of the prime examples of being able to bring, to use comedy to, to uh, tackle a topic, tackle mm -hmm. a huge mm -hmm. topic. And, but that's, with bullying, I feel like, I feel like that's not really done. Mm -hmm. With bullying, I feel like it's it's the straightforward, like you get the PSA or you get the, I guess the reprimanding, but you never get to see it through a light. I guess what I'm trying to say, you never get to see it through that, like. Yeah, that lens. Really, that yeah, lens is yeah. like, oh, like, okay, we're laughing, but like, here's the actual issue. Like, yeah. we may have a moment like where uh, we do a skit or something and it's funny, but okay, here's the actual issue. Yeah. So it's not necessarily laugh to keep from crying, it's like. Ha ha, but cut the music. This is what it is. So talk to a little bit more about your organization because what, what, what inspired it? I mean, what inspired, like what, how long did it take you to build it from the ground? Because I know this is like a precious thing you. How long did Absolutely. it take Absolutely, well, we're still building. We're still building. Um, we, we founded in 2018, mm -hmm. but um, the combination oh, is, and the, the motivation is everything that you all said, you know, just real time talking about your own experiences. Uh, just just facing these things in school, um, what it's done to you, you know, even as you spoke on different things that you, uh, different stages and levels you came to as an individual, um, and, and, and it's such a amazing thing that you were able to do that because so many of our youth don't really reach that opportunity and fullness alone. You know what I mean? Where they can stand in confidence and say, you know, I know what I've been through. I know what I've been said. I know what people have, have tried to speak over me, but I can stand tall in my own character. Like that takes a lot. And it takes a village to help to, to, to provide and develop oh, yeah. that type of growth. Oh, so yeah. shout out to you both for having that already, you know, at your age. But one thing that I've seen even going to college and staying in um, Baltimore is that uh, 
a lot of us, there's no invisible line, the door that you walk through when you leave high school or when you leave K through 12 and now whatever bullying or tragedies you went through, you don't feel that anymore or you're, you're hundred percent grown up. Like it's, it's, there's none of that. There's no invisible line that you walk through and you're new or new adult. You literally become and grow into a result of a lot of the things that you went through. So even as we started working with kids, we almost immediately were like, yo, we got to find a way to get in front of these, these parents and these educators because all they are are adult versions of the kids that we're trying to help now. Who helped them? You know what I mean? So, um, so we do, we do teacher uh, uh, workshops um, where we help you know, teachers use laughter as a benefit in the classroom because it is a benefit, beneficial tool. Uh, we also do uh, workplace bullying workshops because adults bully, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like adults bully and we also just kind of spread our inner message with youth around to educators and parents so they just know the sensitivity and they're reminded of where they were. Because you know, when you're in high school, a lot of us, especially in Baltimore, we go through life. A lot of the students mm. that we see, no matter what age they are, have adult-like experiences, adult-like trauma, to be honest with you. And we can understand that. But at the same time, um, our, our service is to basically kind of reignite that creativity, you know, um, just the positivity in, in uh, expressing yourself, even if it, you're expressing yourself about aspects of your life that wasn't your favorite. The first thing that came to mind when you said, like, laughter turned into a positive thing is how, like, people get in trouble for laughing in class. Right. Like, that's not, I don't think that's something that should exist. Because I feel like no matter how you're, it's like, even, funny, if you're it's like, funny. even if you're laughing at something that's probably not so you're supposed to be laughing at, it's like the ability, it's the, the fact that you have the though. ability. Those be the best no, laughs, though. When you know you're not supposed to be laughing like, at it, like you're trying and you're trying to it. hold it in, and then they just keep going with it, and now you gotta like put your hand in your head and be like, "Oh man, yeah, I'm not supposed to be laughing at this." Powered by like something else, like it's like the, the fact that you have the ability to demonstrate this emotion of like happiness in that second. Like I feel like it's being like silenced by people who may may aren't feeling that at that moment, right? Or cannot feel that, and I feel like it's important to teach adults how not to bully because. There are teacher bullies, there are principal bullies, mm. there are guidance counselor bullies. bullies. Mm. So it's like I feel like people just need to view it more as like abusive thing and less of like, oh, kids can bully kids. It's no, just kids bullying kids. Bully it's, it's a people yeah. thing. You said something really, really good. And I think that I think what uh, Fred said really tied into what you just said is like it starts. Well, I mean, both of you kind of said this, but it starts somewhere mm -hmm. like it starts in the parents. Like we're not just like the kid is not just coming to school and making this kid feel bad like somewhere along the line either they were made to feel bad or they seen their mom and dad make somebody feel mm -hmm. bad about whatever it is so like i feel like it starts with it's a chain reaction mm -hmm. and we see that with a lot of stuff right like not just the bullying not just the mental health we see that in a lot of stuff mm -hmm. where it's just a chain reaction mm -hmm. like it starts somewhere like there's always a head to something one mm -hmm. thing i realized like in my like 17 years of living which is not much but what i'm saying is what I'm trying to say is like, there's always a head to something. Like no issue just springs out of nowhere. Like mm -hmm. it starts somewhere, something along the line, something went wrong. So I think, I, I guess like your teacher, like your teacher workshops, your parent workshops, like is there ever been a time where you've done a workshop and a parent has come back to you and been like, I was doing that all wrong. That's why my kid. Like, have you ever have you ever gone through that? We, we've, we've had a good amount of just moments. Um, I went and say, I mean, cause that, that's a revelation. So we've had moments of thank you. You know what I mean? Moments of I didn't look at it that way or mm -hmm. thank you. Because a lot of it is just young adults, I mean, kids really becoming young adults to adults and then finding their positions in life. You know what I mean? And, and not having opportunities or not giving themselves opportunities to 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 address certain trauma and, and, and certain uh, uh, issues about the past, present, uh, learn different methods in which we teach youth. There's some youth that are going home telling their parents to breathe for 10 seconds when they get mad before they say something that they might regret. You know what I mean? It's just certain things that adults will like benefit parents. from being reminded right. of. So it's good because it's like a full circle thing. We're able to do it with youth, but we don't do it with youth and have youth keep it within themselves. We do it for youth and encourage them to carry that flag, whether it's adults, whether it's your teacher, whether it's, it's, it's your older family members, mm -hmm. because I'm just like you all said, it definitely has a source. Some people, some kids are bullied in some way, shape or form where they see that type of trauma. So they come in and they, they spread it because it's on them emotionally. Some kids 
are more so mimicking just what they see. Their emotional component component isn't even there yet. But if you're at home and all you see is this, 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 and that, you just feel like that's what's supposed to happen. So you're not even, it's not even an outlet yet for you. You're just doing what you think is supposed to be done. Be done. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just, it's it always, I think it's most beneficial when you start with the individual. So we start with all our youth as individuals. And we kind of work, we always call it an inside, we call it an inside out approach. And um, that's the best thing. Because just like you said, PSA, you go in there and say, don't bully, bully's wrong, don't bully no more. You, unfortunately, even though everything you say was factual, you, you don't really inspire too much. You might motivate someone to maybe not bully for the rest of the day, but inspiration changes your life. And, and we inspire by working with the truth from the inside out. I had, there was one time where I, w I was younger and I remember this like it was yesterday. Um, I did the same exact thing because I was, when I was younger, I, I'm like Brayden, I always knew that I was like different from most of the kids that I like was around at the time. I always knew that I was just, I was just different. I wasn't like like them. And I felt like that was, part of the issue is because I already felt, you know how like you, you get bullied because you already feel like you're different and you already have to wrestle with that in yourself. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I already had to wrestle with the fact that like, I'm not like everybody else. And sometimes that gets lonely. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna admit it gets lonely, not having the, the same mindset, the, the kind of rat race mindset and you think a completely different way. Like they'll come up with some solution and they'll be like over here like, okay, we'll do it this way, this way, this way. And you're like, no, if we do this, 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 but wait, can't go there. So let's go this route. And they're just like, that's too much. You're that's weird. Right. Yeah. You're weird. And then, then, then they'll start getting into the like, okay, yeah, you're weird. You're the, you're that, you're that kind of thing. And when you already feel that, it's, it's kind of different. But there was, back to the story, one time I walked, I went home and my mom had gotten mad at me for something that I write, that she rightfully should have gotten mad at me. I think I like, I think I like broke a vase or something. I broke something and she got like really, really mad. And I remember saying, okay, mom, breathe. The silence that hit the room. She just looked at me. She was like, what? I was like, it's breathe. It's, it's going to be okay. She, just, she laughed and she just like walked away. So not only did I save myself from a butt whooping that night, right. I think my mom actually understood how my mind was framed. Cause mind you, I was like five. So, mom, so I saved myself that night, ended up having to clean the base, but it was whatever. But I think that was, that was when even my mom kind of understood my frame of mind. So I feel like the work that you do like helps parents to understand their kids because they're so comfortable like doing this and this is what they've wanted to do but i feel like as young kids you don't have the language for it Absolutely. and so i feel like organizations like little laughs i feel like conversations like this brings language to kids where they're like so that's what i've been feeling like they knew it like kids have an innate sense of things like sometimes they know it they just can't necessarily express it yet so now that you have the language and i feel like little laughs like gives kids you know, language to actually like finally express probably what they've been wanting to express in their house for years by this point. So I wanna, I'm, have you ever had a kid that has come to you and like they, they'll tell you a story about what happened, like what has happened at home. Like I did this to my mom, or I did this, like I did this and I, I finally was able to express it. Like I know that has to be like a joyous thing for you. Yeah, um, I think at most I've, I've got a lot of sibling type of stories. I've got a lot of sibling oh, stories, yeah. mm -hmm. and that always means a lot to me because I feel like I lost my I lost my dad at a young age, and I felt like through a lot of that that um, process of trying to uh, um, uh, grieve grieve right as a young man and find positioning, I became like a kind of like a bully to my younger brother for maybe about a year or two, and 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 that I had a hard time dealing with that as I got older, like in my teenage years. I'm like, wow, like. No, like I was, you like, you start to learn in detail, like, you know, why and, and different reasons. And as I got older, I, I never really regretted that. And it wasn't anything like, you know, um, physical, anything like that. But just like we said, just like you said so eloquently that even some of the words, you know, some of the mental and emotional things that can have even a greater result. So I just always feel really good and um, just positive about the fact when the kids come and tell me really just household just growth period, you know what I mean? Positive involvement period, um, especially if I know for a fact that it has been something with a sibling or something like that, uh, it always feels really good because I directly relate to it. I wanna add to that. I think that like the sibling thing is really important. I have five siblings 
and um, I, so my oldest, well, like the my younger brother, who's the you know the oldest boy, he is like he's my biological, like we had the same mother and father, and I think that so much of me, like you know, my parents like divorced when I was really young, so part of me like really did not want my brother to be like my father, so I would be like super super hard on him and like. I think my mom told me once, I said, you don't have to be so hard on him all the time. I'm like, well, no, he has to da 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 And I feel like sometimes I felt like I had to, like, I had to, like, put, like, do an extra bit of work for him. Mm-hmm. And I think to him it may have come off as bullying. And I, I don't realize that because, like I said, I think I can come in off across different ways to different people. And, you know, I think like, understanding that with my, you know, because social emotional intelligence is really important. I feel like I didn't, Very it's hard cool. to obtain those skills when like, people around you don't have those skills. Because, like, if you know that the only way to get somebody to, like, be a better person is to be super strict and to yell and to cuss and to fuss and all that kind of stuff, that's what you're, that's the recipe that's that you know. Like, you know, we're trained to use recipes and, you know, cherish the things that people have passed on to us. And sometimes it just doesn't work. So, you know, the knowledge I have now, I would never say some of the things I said to my my, my younger siblings. Even my sister, like... I think it's it's harder to deal with those kind of spaces. And I think it's also hard to step in a space with older people and like say your piece about new information. Cause I do this all the time. I'm like the kid in the family that's like every time you come like, oh I don't wanna talk to them because they just gonna like go off and like do the most. But like it's hard to talk to people who don't understand or older like, people of a different generation who refuse to accept these new concepts. And they've never been new, it's just there's new to them because they've never experienced it. And it's like, they, you know, they don't, they don't want you to think you know more than them. So it's like, oh, you know, I, you just a kid. Like, you only 17. That's my that's my least favorite line, by the way. Like, don't Mine just is, say I'm just seven. They like, tell because, you keep on living. Like, I'd be like, so what? Like, okay. Like, that doesn't mean anything. And like, just back to you saying, like, adult trauma. Like, trauma is trauma. I feel like you can't compare what people have been through. And people mature off experience, not age. So I think it's it's really important to... It, they don't like that. They don't, they don't like that. I, they don't, they like, don't that like that. Right. So I, you know, I think it's hard to. I want to acknowledge. I think it's hard to to stand up to people who have made those experiences. And even with the principals, I've seen principals have lectures on bullying and then call out one person in the class for acting up and then like like de- dehumanize them in front of everybody. Like you just, mm. I guess it's like in the same way you're telling people have to do that. You're doing it, but like in a different form. And I feel like, like you said, it's abuse of power. You just can't get up somewhere with your platform and abuse that power. Well, so. I think it's a pattern. I love what you said. I think it's a pattern and a routine that for years and years and years, we've only looked at bullying and a lot of other things. But we're talking about bullying. We've only looked at it like one way. So we only address it one way. And we don't really pay attention to the outcomes to see how well it's been working. Right. So it's just that type of language, that type of PSA. And that's it. But what if bullying is a direct result of the lack of confidence? Then that means anytime you tell someone not to bully, you're not helping. But anytime you can help raise the confidence in the in the younger person, you probably are. So that's what Lil Lash really stands on. That's just that inside out approach. And um, also just a component to provide a youth led platform, because I remember like and I, I give it up. Shout out to City Schools TV. We all here. I'm big brave. Nah. I'll be real. Well, I'm gonna nah. real. I've been real. But now nah, nah, like I remember my sixth grade. I remember like being a church boy growing up. I never said a cuss word out my mouth. I remember I went to Canton Middle School for the sixth grade and I found myself on that playground saying whatever I felt like saying that all the other kids were saying. But then when I would go home, I still had cousins that was my age and older that still looked at it like, oh, Fred, Fred, don't cuss Fred. So it was like I formed that I was going to have a different world once I got to that world. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just hidden from my parents or adults. It was hidden from everybody outside of that world. So it's a lot of kids and um, younger people in general that may not even, they might be the best kid. It's opposite, right? They might be the best kid in school, whether they get bullied, whether they see bullying, whatever, but they go home and they execute what they see or might go through in school or vice versa. So these things go on. And some kids, man, you know the communities we, we at, you know our neighborhoods. Some of these kids are in those communities and they got their head held high, but when they go to school, now it's their outlet. It, it's, it's like ping pong, whichever way you want, give it up. So the, the, a way to eliminate or, or help consistently reduce and support youth on both sides of that is by consistently infusing confidence and understanding, but by giving some ownership too, that when you are away from adults or you're not hearing this type of language, you're still charged to do this in your own way. 
You know what I mean? Like when you, whatever, how you talk, whatever the words you saying, how you giving it up, it, it's you're still should lift and encourage each other. You, you, you still have a, 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 a opportunity, depending on your words, to make or break someone, regardless if an adult or a teacher, anyone is around. I think as students, we have not done a good job in lifting our students up, having them understand that they're more than just a student. So it's big, raise your hand, can I do this, can I do that? So it's like, yo, I'm not bullying when adults are around. The ownership isn't there of what that does as an individual. So that's something we work on. Y'all, I love this conversation so much. We're gonna take a quick break, but come back. <laughs>